David Tlale, welcome. It's great to have you with us. Thank you for having me, John. Are you are you someone who observes fashion around you and 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 tries to draw inspiration from it, or do you do you plow your own course and not think at all about what anyone else is doing? I look at. Um, homeless people yes. um, I find a lot of inspiration and a very intriguing draping and like how they layer themselves to look good and just to be warm and because the other thing is that they have nothing but they make do with what what they have Yeah. and I remember one day I think it's about three weeks ago I was sitting in a restaurant and I was just like seeing this homeless person she had like a dress and a trouser and there was like a little blanket on top but how the whole thing came together it was like artistically it was yes. really dynamic so I do pay attention on how people look around me and what they're wearing and the textures that they fuse together David Let's do the internal audit thing. You you <laughs> set off for university and you're studying internal auditing um, not for very long as it turns out. What, yeah. what was the thinking behind that? The thinking behind it was, uh, let me become an accountant okay, um, or financial accountant or manager. And I thought safety, stability, mm -hmm. do the normal thing. Even then, I mean, being an auditor, it was like quite interesting in South Africa. This, this was like in 1993. And career guidance when, because at high school I was doing the commercial subjects, economics, business economics and accounting. So I was like, what's the best next thing to do? Right. Becoming an auditor. So I was like, hmm, maybe not today. But but you were interested in clothes. Yeah. You've, I've seen in other interviews you you uh, designed clothes for, for your sister's mm -hmm. uh, dolls that dolls, they had yeah. at home, their Barbie dolls. Um, w was there any conversation you had with anyone saying, I'm not exactly sure what it is, but there's a creative part of me. There's a, there's a, bit of me that wants to make things and express myself that could possibly find its way into a career was that was that just unthinkable because presumably your your family situation your mom's single domestic mm -hmm. worker things were i would assume were always tight Absolutely. was that was that top of mind that was top of mind yes. and uh, for me it was like how do i change the status quo right now and the only way was to go to school like like literally just do what will bring us income um being a creative was never even spoken of yes. because um, which brought a huge feud within the family when I came back to say mom I'm not going to be an auditor anymore I want to be a fashion designer and it was like it was major because I can imagine uh, <laughs> first of all here I am taking this woman's money who was a domestic worker right and just like wasting it like literally for a good nine months and um, it was like I don't believe you've just done that. I mean, I've spent all the money and I was the commuting between Johannesburg and Pretoria every every other month and, and the res money and everything else. I just like, I'm sorry. She was like, okay, actually, you're on your own in this design thing of yours. You don't have my blessing. You're going to find your own money, registration. I was like, that's fine. I don't have a problem. I started hustling. I worked at the hair salon. I started doing uh, flower arrangements. Right. I, I worked so hard to raise registration money. And ultimately, I made it. David, the process of actually designing, are you someone who's got sketch pads and you pull over to the side of the road and you draw? Or is it all in your head? Uh, it's, it's, it, it varies. Okay. Um, I usually write on my phone, mm -hmm. like techniques. I, I hardly design, but I, because I, I'm more driven by details. Yes. And also because a dress is a dress. What really matters most is the, the construction, the craftsmanship that goes into it. So if a thought or an idea comes through to say, okay, this is what you're doing now, or this season, I'll start writing down, you know, like this is what I'm going to do. I'll, I'll mm -hmm. pick up like a raffia, fuse it with um, um, ostrich feathers and put on tape on top. You know, so it's... it's, it's so all you're those capturing pros. thoughts. I capture thoughts and right. then, uh, then I start creating. Sometimes I do sketch when I feel inspired, but I get more inspired mostly by just literally just taking fabric and start applying the technique. David, we finished by giving you three wishes, which mm -hmm. I have no power to grant, but let's do it anyway. <laughs> what, what, what's, what's your wish for the South African fashion industry? I wish the fashion industry um, grows and we get to a point where we really practice the business of fashion and uh, 
just not uh, just like not just doing fashion week and then it's over but we want to see people consuming the product in a major way and uh, seeing our retailers major retailers supporting local designers because the whole thing of major retailers going overseas buying samples duplicating them and selling it to our public is not cool it, it simply says we don't believe in south african talent we want to, to see that change what is your wish for our country, outside of fashion, but, but the country as a whole? My wish for our country is to see us being united and believing in the beautiful South Africa that we have uh, and understanding and appreciating our past and knowing that we have a brighter future. And we need to get to a point of understanding that at this stage that we are at right now, we're in a stage of realignment and realignment is not easy. And the new things that we are being exposed to, we were never exposed to. And we now have an opinion, we're in a democratic country, we need to live and work together to build this country. And, and finally, what's your wish for yourself? My wish for myself is to become a global brand that is proudly made in South Africa and in Africa and that generations to come will still be consuming David Lale, including you, John. <laughs> well, you certainly made a good start, David Lale. Many thanks for giving us your time tonight on KFM 95.9. It's been great to have you. Thank you for having me. Thank you.